This Great Plains Athletic Conference college football game was made possible by Lincoln Electric System. Use LES to save more. Union Bank. You belong here. And Nebraska Western University, where experience is the difference. Your experience. Nebraska Wesleyan trailing Northwestern here 13 to 10 at halftime. And let's take a look back at some of the highlights from the first half. And Bartman in the backfield. It's a pitch to Smith going right side into the end zone. Touchdown. Northwestern, a good block up front. Side, Hotman back to throw over the middle. And it's caught by Earhart. He took a look hard. And he fell back to pocket. He gets a little bit rattled and frustrated. Toss is intercepted again. And it's Brett Kotzer this time who picks the ball off on that short pass. And, and uh, give it to Delbaugh, jumping oh, over the center. Yes, he did. Touchdown, Nebraska Wesleyan. So he might not be able to move the puck. Davis Blumendahl looking to the air, throws a pass. It is complete for a first down. Still on his feet. Cutting back inside to the 50. It is the receiver, Tyler Walker, and he is tripped up and tackled. Just some of the highlights from the first half of action here at Abel Stadium as Nebraska Wesleyan comes back out into the football field here for the second half. And there you see it, Northwestern up on Wesleyan, 13 to 10, back with the second half coming up in a moment on 21 Sports. Nebraska Wesleyan University. This year we mark an important milestone, Nebraska Wesleyan's 125th anniversary. Join us on campus this fall for our anniversary kickoff celebration and homecoming activities. In addition, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends will collectively take on a challenge to give 12,500 hours of volunteer time to community service. Check our website for event schedules, stories, and photos of today and yesteryear. All of us who share a sense of pride and ownership in Nebraska Wesleyan University have a wonderful opportunity this year to reconnect with friends, students, professors, and staff, and to celebrate all that we have accomplished together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. It's just surprising when I walk in how much it feels like home even though we've only been here a month. Having a baby is a definite lifestyle change. Grayson's the boss around here. We moved in two days before he was born. Union Bank really helped us. They were so personable. They really got to know our story and care that we needed to get into the house before the baby was born. We're starting a family and developing our lives together in a place that we can call home. We're back at Abel Stadium, 21 Sports, Jeff Motes and Lucas Mormon and our entire 21 Sports crew with you today for GPAC football. Nebraska Wesleyan trailing only 13 to 10 to the 15th ranked team in NAIA Northwestern. And uh, we, we look at the first half stats and uh, Tyler Francis has uh, been kind of the key to this offense and just commanding it at the quarterback spot able to force a drive downfield that eventually set up the only touchdown of the game for Westland. That was that one yard leap into the end zone from Jordan Delba. Yeah, eight of 14 through the air, 66 yards, no interceptions. The key there, Nate Hopman and his time in there, three of eight, but he had that interception 
uh, and the fumble on the first play from scrimmage. So two turnovers. Right now, the Nebraska Wesleyan winning that turnover battle. Two interceptions by Davis Blumenthal is uncharacteristic because he only had one coming in. And it rushing yards, Nebraska Wesleyan 40 yards on the ground, 116 through the air. They limited our Northwestern to just 169 yards overall. And they've ran 40, or uh, excuse me, 44 plays to 27 plays for Northwestern. They own that time of possession, 1956 to 1004. So almost doubling them up there in the time of possession. And that's a, a good way to keep this offense at bay is to keep them off the field. Opening kick of the second half, and here it's Bartman down the near sideline. He's to the 40 and sandwiched up and taken down inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. And no flags on that one, so a nice return by Bartman. Good following the Northwestern fans out here, happy with that return. And he caught that one at a full sprint, a short kick that time, and just took it right down the sideline. We saw how hard he is to bring down in some earlier runs on his touchdown run. But great field position for Northwestern to start this one. And so, first and ten, and it's a handoff to Brandon Smith and Phil Latimer comes in to corral him, stopping him at the 25 yard line, about a pickup of three. Russell Walton up there in the front as well, turning back to the inside as they want the fullback dive out of the option look this time. And they got some good offensive linemen up front. They're led by Nathan Newman. Option pitch, Smith near side, cuts inside the 25 and is stopped on the play. Michael Hittner. In on the tackle, along with Brett Kotzer. Did a nice job of shedding the block on the outside there. And Blumendahl, a little hitch in his giddy up as he was brought down on that one. Looks like maybe that right ankle, a little tender as he sees. Favoring it just a tad. See how that develops at all. Third and five. Drop back pass. It goes to Walker, forced out of bounds by Ward Dean inside the five yard line. And the officials will spot the football at the four yard line. Coach Groom on the sideline, let's take a look here. Thought maybe he got away with a push off, the receiver that is. Let's take one more look at Sorry. this angle. You don't get to see it. If he did, he disguised it pretty well. And now in business inside the five. Hand off to given to Smith, trying to work to the edge. And he is stopped and surrounded by Prairie Wolves. Russell Walton among those coming in to help make the stop. And Seth Wardine over there too. The time it looked like Blumendahl might have actually wanted to keep that one himself. He'd already handed it off, tried to take it back out of the, after the handoff out of the stomach, but had to let Smith see what he could do with it. Actually lost three yards on the play. Second down and goal. This is at the Wesleyan seven. Blumendahl looking to throw. Near side and the upper blocker. Touchdown to Northwestern. Wesleyan have one guy on his tail, and that was Aaron Bainey. The walker and a nice little route into the corner of the end zone. They've kind of been picking on Bainey this afternoon, the sophomore out of Bertrand. Or Binkelman, excuse me. They've been going his way a lot. Just a nice crisp route that time. Point after coming up here from Mike O'Brien. First one was blocked. Snap the hold, the kick is up. And it is good. So Northwestern has extended their lead back to 10, 20 to 10 to score. Back to Able Stadium in a moment on 21 Sports. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Back here at Abel Stadium. 21 Sports, proud to bring you GPAC football today. 15th ranked Northwestern in town. They have a 20 to 10 lead over Nebraska Wesleyan. You know, hanging close at halftime, 13 to 10. 
they've already been, like I said, been some close games against these two teams when they play here in Lincoln. But last week was a similar situation. At Doan, 17-10, they trailed at halftime to the Tigers, ranked 23rd overall. And then the third quarter, the wheels kind of just fell off, and they got outscored 17 to nothing. So that third quarter has really been a direct correlation of what happens in the game. Overall, in all the losses this year, they've been outscored 35 to nothing in the third quarter. Low driving kick. Delbaugh bounces off him, recovers it. He's up to the 20. Tries to bounce out to the outside, and he is quickly tackled at the 26-yard line. And it was Mark Alderman who made the stop. Take a look at this again. Delbaugh bounced up right in front of him, recovers. Did the best he could to shift in and try to get out of tackles as much as possible. So Delbaugh, been a busy guy today. One guy that we have not seen a lot of as far as returns is Cody Island. Yeah, they've done a good job of keeping it out of his hands. Talked about that in the first half. And they just don't kick it his way. And I'm really surprised that more teams haven't done that. It's more of a surprise when they do. Francis throws a toss. It's slightly underthrown to Dustin Bryant at the 30-yard line. Goes incomplete. Tyler Francis got the pass off just in time. And, and one thing that we want to point out here is that we, we mentioned in the pregame, we mentioned in the pregame that uh, they were going to be alternating in terms of quarterback with Hotman taking a couple of series and Francis uh, also getting a couple of reps. But so far, it's been mostly Tyler Francis has been in this football game. Well, they said once they found the guy with the hot hand, they were going to go with it. And so far, it's Ben Francis. He's led them their only scoring drive. Hasn't turned the ball over. Francis carries it out downfield to Peeper. Goes incomplete. Coverage on the play for Northwestern's Gerald Kyles. So this will be a third and ten for the Curry Wolves. Well, Northwestern, they, they've watched their film. They looked at the stat sheet as well. As they've had great coverage on Peeper whenever he's been out in routes. They've really had him covered up well. He's been their big play guy. A couple of touchdowns over 59 yards. And they've followed him up today after having five catches two weeks ago, seven catches the week before. Big third down here. Peeper split near side. Larson far side. Another wide out as well. That's Bryant. Francis is almost taken down, but keeps it alive. He is to the 30, to the 35, and knocked ahead and picks up the first down as he gets notched ahead by Isaiah Twitty and is stopped at the 41-yard line. And Francis not known as a runner by any means, but he's done what he needs to do. Refuses to go down, spins away there, and then the receivers just ran all the defensive backs out of the play, ran down the field. And he had lots of green, and he picks up the first down. He had the big play, 15 yards on that fourth down conversion in the first half. Another one here. So first and 10, here's a pitch to Bryant. Bryant tries to cut back into the middle and gets about a yard to the 42-yard line. That's it. And now we got an injured player for Northwestern on the field. And it might be Kyles. He's down face flat. It is Kyles. No, it, I think it's Isaiah Twitty. Or Twitty, I beg your pardon. It was Twitty that went down. Time out of the field. Just over 12 minutes to go here in this third quarter. 20 to 10 Northwestern on 21 Sports. It's just surprising when I walk in how much it feels like home, even though we've only been here a month. Having a baby is a definite lifestyle change. Grayson's the boss around here. We moved in two days before he was born. Union Bank really helped us. They were so personable. They really got to know our story and care that we needed to get into the house before the baby was born. We're starting a family and developing our lives together in a place that we can call home. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln.
Hi, I'm Fred Olds, President of Nebraska Wesleyan University. This year we mark an important milestone, Nebraska Wesleyan's 125th anniversary. Join us on campus this fall for our anniversary kickoff celebration and homecoming activities. In addition, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends will collectively take on a challenge to give 12,500 hours of volunteer time to community service. Check our website for event schedules, stories, and photos of today and yesteryear. All of us who share a sense of pride and ownership in Nebraska Wesleyan University have a wonderful opportunity this year to reconnect with friends, students, professors, and staff and to celebrate all that we have accomplished together. I look forward to seeing you soon. And there you see Isaiah Twitty being looked at by the training staff as uh, he went down pretty hard on this last play for Wesley. And take a look at this again as Dustin Bryant comes around. And then there's the helmet to helmet contact and Twitty goes down. And so he is being helped up. <laughs> being taken off the field. He is up and walking, but he's being escorted off by the Northwestern training staff. He'll, he'll get checked out. Hopefully nothing too serious. And the leading tackler, Twitty, for this Northwestern Red Raider team out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Take a look at this again. Right there. there. Right there. That's getting your bell rung. That's how the old timers call it. He may have been briefly knocked out. Yeah. I'm not sure at this point. Second and nine here from the 42 of Wesley. And Francis will set up in a spread offense. He is alone. Man in the backfield. Earhart in motion. Francis looking to throw. Over the middle, it's caught by Delbaugh at the 49, stumbles ahead, and it's going to be marked out at the 44-yard line in a first down. Now Delbaugh is down. And what do we... He kind of reached for that left knee when he yeah. went down right away. Take a look at the play here. Watch this again. Another good completion. And then he kind of just lost his footing. Planted there, and doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary, but he's going to get helped up. Up, jogs off under his own power for Delbaugh. Delbaugh yeah. working hard today with a great catch that time, so that gives Wesleyan a first down and 10 at the 44 yard line. Murray Wolves will send Connor Davis as a receiver to the far side. One split near side. That's Peeper. Francis under center. Rolling to his left, looking to maybe throw, but he's going to keep it and try to run with it. And he is held up and picks up maybe about one yard to the 43-yard line. I'm sure it's not by design, but this afternoon, Francis has the most yards on the ground for Nebraska Wesleyan. 31 yards rushing in five attempts. And he's made some of those happen just when things have broken down and he's had to scramble. Second down here for the Prairie Wolves. Four receivers near side for Tyler Francis. Dropping back, looking to throw. Brandon Lou to the defender. Throws up field, diving attempt for a catch from Bryant, incomplete. Now third and nine here for Wesleyan. That was an incomplete pass, but Noah Kloss in the tight end. A key block up there is Francis was being chased on the outside, and Clawson came back and took care of business, gave him enough time to get that pass off. Francis in the game, we've seen a lot more no-back sets for the Prairie Wolves. That last time, four receivers out in the formation. Now this time, he does have a back beside him. Davis in motion. Third down here, and Francis is back for a loss. The blitz was on, and the stop made by Nate Van Ginkle. 
And he came untouched off that right side of the defensive line. No one picked up that blitz from his linebacker spot. So the Prairie Wolves in punt formation. Kelby Vandenberg will punt. Justin Wollard is back to return. He's around the tent. Here's the boot. High booming kick. Takes a bounce to the 19, bounces back inside. And how about Seth Wardeen as he gets the ball down inside the one yard line of Northwestern. Looked like it was maybe gonna get away from him there for a second. It took a great bounce for Nebraska Wesleyan, but that was a speedy bounce and Wardeen able to track it down and dive on it. Take a look. Perfect, right at the one yard line. So now, see if Nebraska Wesleyan can keep him pinned back here. 99 yards to go on the great coverage down the punt team by Wardeen. So, Blumendahl, they go with a handoff. Looks like Smith took the carry to make that, uh, wasn't Smith, it was Bartman. So Theo Bartman with another carry. Both good sized backs here. He's turn and goes straight ahead. Bartman 6'3, 220. Smith 5'11, 225. So you gotta expect just a lot of turn and hand off here. Get yourself a little more room to operate. Second and four. And Smith takes the carry that time up to about the nine yard line. Close to the ten. It's so down here. Third and two here. Turn the field a little bit here if you hold him. Have a chance for maybe Eiler to get his hand on a punt. Good job up front. Carry again to the 11. And the clock will stop. They're gonna measure. Yeah, it's close. Good, good spot. Drove that pile forward. Made it. Yep, he got it. So the drive continues here for Northwestern. <laughs> Davis Blumendahl again. Out of the gun here on first and 10. Time to throw, swings it to the near side blocker. Blocker is tripped up on the play by Seth Wardeen. At about the 13 yard line. Wardeen with the matchup on Walker for this time. As earlier in the game, we saw a lot of Bainey out there matched up with Walker. And Walker seemed to be having a field day against Bainey. So this time, Wardeen moves over there in the corner spot. Now Smith takes it around right side, and he's still on his feet, and he is still moving. And it took more than just Reeves to take him down. Cody Eiler had to come over there and help out too. You know, the defensive front does a pretty good job. They initially get there, get some hands on him, but then just Bartman and Smith, such tough runners that they refuse to make any tackle easy. They bust tackles, they keep the pile moving. There's a reason these guys had 140 and 160 yards each last week. This is third and four. Lumadal throws a pass far side incomplete. Biker was the intended target. Cody Eiler had the coverage. That'll bring up fourth down. So the Wesley defense coming up big. Lumadal a little off his game in the passing department this afternoon. I mean, he's been behind a couple receivers, the two interceptions, and 
You look at his numbers coming in, only the one interception and almost 800 yards passing. Wesleyan's found something that works when they drop back to pass with Blumendahl. Get some pressure and fluster him a little bit. Nice snap. Just in time, but a short kick. It takes a bounce out of bounds. It initially bounced at about the 36. Great field possession for the Prairie Wolves to take over here. Short field. they got to take advantage of these situations. Earlier in the first half, they had the interception then we're not able to convert and they missed the field goal after a turnover so now a short field after your defense did a nice job after the good special teams play by Wardine and uh, Vandenberg to pin him back deep offense needs to come out and punch one in so Wesleyan works out of the eye here on first and ten from the 38 and a handoff it looked like Bryant that time took the carry for the Prairie Wolves. Stop for about a two yard loss back at the 40. The running game's really been tough sledding. I mean, they 40 yards at the half, 30 of those were from the scrambles of Francis. Delba had over 11 carries with only 21 yards at the break. And really, most of the success has come through the air. Davis is the wide out far side along with Delba. Three others split near side, including Corey Jones. Here's Francis in trouble. Still moving here to the near side. Throws the ball, and it's going to go way out of bounds. Wesleyan looking for some pass well, interference as Corey Jones was thrown out of bounds. Yeah, he had two hands square in the back, but I mean, guess maybe it was uncatchable at that point, or he wasn't going to be able to catch it as long as he was already out of bounds. But yeah, definitely a push there. Didn't draw the laundry, though. Another big third down. Actually, they've been pretty good in these third and long situations. Francis out of the gun. Bryant with him in the backfield. Keeper, the receiver near side. It's Larson far side. Pass over the middle is incomplete. It was intended for Brooks Earhart, who was coming in. And uh, cutting in toward the middle on a short route. And now it's, I believe that is Twitty who's back into the game that may have gone down. So an injury timeout on the field. With 6.21 to go here in this third quarter, back to Able Stadium in a moment. Here is the punt. Kelby Vandenberg's boot. And it goes out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. See exactly where the market tried to nail it in coffin corner. Just inside the 20. Oh, Vandenberg. Say the rushing attack, they try to get it going with Bryant, but. Bryant's got 12 carries, just 19 yards up to this point. Say, so, this tough sledding, the six scrambles from Francis is the only thing really working. On the other side, nine carries, almost 70 yards for Bartman, 35 yards for Smith on the ground. Blumendahl, here on first and 10, option pitch, near side. It is. Carry that time by Theo Bartman. Bartman takes it to the 28-yard line. Not an eight-yard pickup for him. Fortunate it wasn't more. Good open field tackle that time. Hey, nice job, Reeves. By Reeves, who comes up here, wraps up, chases him down from behind as there was a lot of green and a lot of blockers set up if Reeves doesn't make that play. Second and about a yard. Bartman loses the football. Mad dash four on the field. Scoot up by Iowa. In the end zone. Touchdown. The words to Wesleyan. Cody Eiler just has a way of finding the football in big situations. And getting
getting it to the end zone. And the Prairie Wolves are back in business, but let's see who put the hit first on Bartman. Here's the handoff. And I couldn't get a good look on who it was, but there you see Cody Eiler returning it back into the end zone. But that was an all-important hit. Textbook hit. Textbook hit. Led with the helmet across the body, poked it free. PAT's up and good, and just like that, we got ourselves a game. Jay Brooks with the extra point, 5.32 to go. Here in this third quarter, and Wesley climbs back to within three at 20 to 17 on 21 Sports. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln. Here's the play again, and I, was it Brett Kotzer? Yep, it was Brett Kotzer who knocked the ball loose from Bartman, and Cody Eiler takes it into the end zone. Huge defensive play from Kotzer. And there you see Cody Eiler, the senior out of O'Neill, and the Prairie Wolves are now back to within three at 20 to 17, just over five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Bartman picks up the ball at the 19 on the return near side. Dancing along the near sideline and forced out of bounds finally by Clint Baldwin. Oh, big play by the defense. Defense, special teams, something like that needed to spark. Nebraska Wesley and his, the offense was moving the ball but just unable to convert. The defense comes up big there. We talked about this. Time and time again, a lot of times, the five out of the last six games here in Lincoln between these two teams, it's been decided by four points or less, and they've all been to Northwestern's favor. Hand off that time, and Phil Latimer puts a stop on the running back, Brandon Smith. Well, you know, scored at trailing by just three, and a lot of the reason why is the turnover margin. You know, Nebraska Wesleyan is forcing turnovers. It's the fourth turnover the day in Northwestern and the last couple games Prairie Wolves have been on the flip side of that. There's an option play, pitch to Smith. <laughs> Junior out of Burton, Nebraska, Ball City High School. Coach Drew down there, clapping on the sideline. He's liking what he's seeing out of his guys. Hittner coming up, filling from his defensive back spot, from his safety spot. Inside out, played the run. Third and long. Ball at the 42-yard line. Let's see if they bring some pressure. Lumendahl over the middle, pass is complete to Smith, picks up the first down, and finally tackled across the 40 at the 39. That time they just leaked him out of the backfield. Smith hung in for a little bit, then got out. Kind of a relief foul for Blumendahl, and that's why him and Bartman, the top two receivers as well on this team. A lot of situations like that. So it's first and 10 at the Wesleyan 39-yard line, 4.06 to play in the third. Blumendahl swing toss to Smith, it's complete. Takes it inside the 30, he's got room. Green space ahead of him, 10-5, touchdown. And just like that, the Red Raiders respond. In misdirection. They sent everyone out. Looked like it was going to go to Bartman the other way. A little throwback screen almost to Smith. And almost untouched in the 39-yard reception. So with 3.56 to go here in the third, Northwestern extends their lead to nine with the point after pending. Mike O'Brien to attempt it. Here it is. The kick is up, and it is good. 3.56 remaining third quarter. Northwestern back up on 10, 27-17 on 21 Sports. We cycle here with a simple but important message. 
Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet. And you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. So after Wesley gets a big break on defense and force a fumble, there you see Cody Eiler, he's the guy that scooped the ball up off the fumble and the force fumble there by Brett Kotzer on the previous possession. Just Northwestern answering right back though, just four plays, 56 yards and 90 seconds, capped off with that 39 yard touchdown pass to Brandon Smith. Move Eiler and swap spots with Delbaugh. Eiler back on the left side now. See if they kick it to him. And Eiler gets it in the end zone. He'll return it. It's up to the 20. Trying to cut outside. Still on his feet. Spinning and finally tackled. And they will mark him down at the 24-yard line. Coach so, Keller making some adjustments. Swinging things around and getting the ball in the hands of Eiler. So they've been kicking it deep to that left corner. Get in his hands. Explosive when it happens. Francis back out there for another series. Like I say, they, they found the hot hand. It's bent Francis for the most part. They've, they've stuck with him here through this third quarter and most of that second quarter. First and ten for... Wesley and Francis rolling to his right, looking to throw. Earhart completes the pass. Not only completes it, they're going to roll. Pass interference more than likely against Northwestern. Levi Dykeshorn. It was mostly that backhand, that back arm around the body early. Pass interference. Number two, three on the Automatic first down at the spot of the arm. Yeah, back arm, he was all over him the whole time, and then a little early, so that will get you. Break for Wesley and first down in a couple yards. Murray Wolves have it at their own 28. Low snap to Francis. Throws a pass, it is complete to Del Blanc, the 36. And they will give him the forward progress at the 36-yard line. So a good pickup there of about eight. Delba always trying to make something happen, reverse his field. That time he did get wrapped up in a nice ball again. Delba over the middle again. That's they're going back to that middle where they had success in the first half. That last penalty under Northwestern, they're six of the afternoon. Double whiteouts far side. Work out of the eye, out of the eye of motion is Bryant. Francis is wrapped up and tackled and taken down. Aaron Jansen put the stop on Tyler Francis. Yeah, Francis didn't have a chance that time. The, the entire defensive line got the jump on that O-line up front this time. There wasn't a, a white shirt that got a good solid block. They just came shooting through that time. And, Francis, nowhere to go with it, but down. Big third down here, third and five. Davis split far side, Peeper near side. Earhart in motion. Francis looking to throw, has to scramble out of a tackle, but not for long as he is immediately wrapped up and stopped. Gerard Corellin. They're bringing some pressure off the edges now. We'll work on a linebacker up now and then, but it's just at the point of attack. This Nebraska Wesleyan offensive line has got to do a better job up front, slowing down the, the defenders, give Francis a little time to work. Here's Vandenberg's punt. Signaled as a fair catch on the 39 yard line by Justin Wollard. 
Minute 35 remaining here in this third quarter. Raiders, Red Raiders leading at 27 to 17 over Wesleyan. And a few folks deciding to spend the afternoon out here at Abel Stadium. Just a gorgeous afternoon here in September. Couldn't ask for a better fall day. Only to make it a little better, I guess, is for those fans, is a Wesleyan win. A little play action here from Blumendahl. The pass goes incomplete. And it was intended on the far side of the field to Ben Green. Cody Eiler had the coverage. I think a few Red Raider fans were wondering where the flag was, thought that was it may have been pass interference. Eiler along that sideline did a good job using the sideline as an extra defender. Forcing Green over there, wasn't a lot of room to make to catch it, sailed high and out of bounds anyway. With the doll swing toss complete, over here on the near side. And it was uh, Jordan Nicolet who came up with that reception. Gotzer again, good speed from his linebacker spot, runs down the play from behind, just a little flare pass, trying to get the receiver in space. Third down and seven. Firecracker as well. He's that spark plug that makes things go. Good push by Walton, and then he's hanging on. Latterman says, I'll hop over the pile, help you out. Another punt, so back and forth here. A couple punts by each squad. See if Eiler gets a chance to return this one. You know, the last time, dodged a bullet as it was touched by a Red Raider early. Tyler gets it at the 27. Cuts out to the outside. Still on his feet. Forced out of bounds around the 40. That's a good team speed by Northwestern, though, to slow down Eilers. See that rugby style kick. Situations like this in the past, we've seen Eiler get to that corner, and then it's a free for all. But good job right there. Slowing him down just enough. And the other Red Raiders to come in and force him out of bounds. Only four seconds remain here in this third quarter. Quick snap, Francis. Ball almost intercepted. Knocked away by Nate Van Ginkle. And it was intended for Peeper. One second remains here in this third quarter. With uh, that time, Francis thought he was going to catch the Red Raider defense napping a little bit. Kind of got a quick snap on him. And Wanted to go back shoulder fade over there to Peeper, but out of his linebacker spot that time. It was Hegstead that just ran it perfectly. And really dodged the bullet there. Out of the eye here. And now Francis keeps it. Dives ahead, penalty flags come out. Free play there, Francis knew it, so once he saw he had him in the neutral zone, snapped it, just went straight ahead, gonna get five yards and an extra down out of it. His time expires here in the third quarter. Number 51 on defense, second down. the and a quarter or a half on a defensive penalty, so one untimed play here from the 45-yard line. I have no idea what it is. So, second down and five. Again, no time on the game clock, but the play clock down to 15. Earhart and Larson split to the far side, Peeper near side. Francis looking to throw. It's caught by Earhart. Short of the first down at the Wesleyan 49-yard line. Still a good-looking pass. And when we resume with the fourth quarter here, Wesleyan will have it at midfield. But an interesting third quarter. 
There you see the hit by Brett Kotzer, and the ball scooped up by Cody Eiler, and a return for a touchdown that put the Murray Wolves within three, but Northwestern responds, and there's the play right here. It's Brandon Smith off the swing pass and takes it into the end zone. Through three, it's Northwestern 27, Nebraska Wesleyan 17 on 21 Sports. Hi, I'm Fred Olds, president of Nebraska Wesleyan University. This year we mark an important milestone, Nebraska Wesleyan's 125th anniversary. Join us on campus this fall for our anniversary kickoff celebration and homecoming activities. In addition, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends will collectively take on a challenge to give 12,500 hours of volunteer time to community service. Check our website for event schedules, stories, and photos of today and yesteryear. All of us who share a sense of pride and ownership in Nebraska Wesleyan University have a wonderful opportunity this year to reconnect with friends, students, professors, and staff, and to celebrate all that we have accomplished together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Third and one here for Wesleyan as we begin the fourth quarter. Here at Abel Stadium, Francis brought back pass. It is complete to Davis. It's enough for a first down, but he is tackled and spotted at the 44-yard line. And now we got penalty flags that come out, and this may be a personal foul against Northwestern. Yeah, it'll be a unsportsmanlike conduct, I think. It might be on Gerard Fuellen. That's a costly penalty. They already had the first down, but. Giving up 15 yards in your own territory at this point in the contest. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 50 on the defense. 15 yards by first down. That's huge. And for Northwestern, that would hurt them here, especially if Wesley oh. can capitalize here. Let's see, here's the catch. Picks up the first down yardage. It really hurts you here if you're Northwestern. This is after the play. It's not needed. It's clearly down. It's a self-inflicted penalty. Delbon motion. Francis on the counter play. Hands up to Earhart. But Northwestern read the play. And it was Aaron Jansen who came in to make the stop. <laughs> Only 40 yards rushing in the game for Nebraska Wesleyan. <sighs> they just. I think it's a mic. Can't I'm quite sure. <laughs> find anywhere to find a crease. I mean, Bryant's had a few runs of six or seven yards, but no one on the Wesleyan roster right now is more than 19 yards rushing. One receiver each side here on second down. Delbon motion. Francis looking to throw. Feeling the pressure, he's just going to have to keep it. Knocked ahead, past the 25 to the 24-yard line. Knocked down that time by Taylor Morris. I'll tell you, the Red Raiders, they're helping Francis out in his running game because they're pushing him forward every time at the end of the runs when he takes off. Did a good job of feeling he falls forward for two more yards. Thought he was really going to take a lick there. But Francis has done a good job of feeling the pressure when it's came. And it's been often here in the second half. The, the protection is broken down quite frequently for the Prairie Wolves. Jones, Delbaugh, Larson near side, Earhart and Peeper to the far side, and Delbaugh was in motion. Drop back pass, complete to Jones at the 20. Inside the 20, tackled out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Inside there, they'll mark him at the 14, a first down for Wesley. So from one former rocket to another. Great job by Francis recognizing the blitz came from that side, and he was all alone over there. Got it to Jones. A lot of green space as the corner was run off by the receiver in the deep route. So good job through the progressions from Francis to find the open receiver. Three receivers near side, two far side. Delbaugh get in motion here on first and 10. Francis has some room to run, throws ahead, pass is complete. A penalty flag coming in late, but it was Peeper who made the reception inside the five yard line. They'll spot him at the three. First grab of the afternoon for Peeper. They sort out the laundry here. 
again, Francis keeping things alive with his feet. Able to navigate the pressure. Find Peeper over the middle of the field here. A defensive hold is what it looks like the call is. Now they're trying to figure out where the ball was. Do they want to take the, the catch or do they want to take the penalty? Let's see what they decide here. Holding. Number 52 on the defense. That penalty is a first down. So this will be a first and goal at the three yard line of Northwestern. Francis again, making the pocket aware of the presence and finding Peeper at the, right around the three yard line. So the transfer from Peru State has kind of taken over the quarterbacking duties this afternoon. So they'll stack that eye up with Brian at the tailback spot. And here's a keeper by Francis. And is short of getting into the end zone inside the one. He's right at the goal line. I like that play call, though. You, everyone thinks you're going to load it up to Bryant there. Just a little bootleg action. And let Francis get out there. Good-sized kid. Just see if he can pull his way forward. About a half a football shy. See if they sneak it here. Level the pull back, tailback Bryant. Second and goal. Inside the one. Francis goes around left tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska Wesleyan. And Tyler Francis takes it into the end zone. Nothing fancy here. Just a good old fashioned quarterback sneak over the left side. Keeper the whole way. And the Prairie Wolves now down by four, but the point after coming up from Jay Brooks, the snap, the hold, the kick is up, and it is good. 11 minutes and 33 seconds to go in this game, and it's still a contest. Northwestern up by three again, 27-24 on 21 Sports. It's just surprising when I walk in how much it feels like home, even though we've only been here a month. Having a baby is a definite lifestyle change. Grayson's the boss around here. We moved in two days before he was born. Union Bank really helped us. They were so personable. They really got to know our story and care that we needed to get into the house before the baby was born. We're starting a family and developing our lives together in a place that we can call home. So Tyler Francis helps Cap, uh, capping off another drive for Nebraska Wesleyan as he keeps it and takes it into the end zone. And Wesleyan now within three again, 27 to 24. This next possession for Northwestern, very important and also important for the Wesleyan defense. Yeah, they've had some, you know, some good things in defense, the fumble recovery, a couple interceptions. But they've slowed down this rushing attack. I mean, these guys put up 343 yards last week on the ground alone. Takes a bounce, and it's bobbled around the one-yard line, or at the goal line, and a short return for Mikolev. And Wesleyan was able to get, out, get down there in time and stop him at the 14-yard line. So now, Northwestern, watch this again. This is a hard time fielding it off the helmet, then wasn't sure where it was at. Finally gained control of it. And as a return guy, about then that panic starts to set in. When you don't know where the football's at, and you're at your own goal line. And the faithful here for the Prairie Wolves trying to get after it and support this defense. Wesley in defensively trying to make a big stop. Blumenthal with a pitch far side. Bartman takes it and is stopped on a short gain. Up to the 17-yard line, about a three-yard pickup. Gets three yards on the option, and that's that's okay. Coach Kroom, you know, if they can limit it to three yards in those plays, it's just eliminating those big plays. They've done a good job 
after the half, really bottling it up. Say only 88 yards on the ground before that play for this Northwestern rushing attack that came in with a 343-yard performance last week. And Wesleyan defense doing their job on the ground, coming up with some turnovers. Second and seven, Blumenthal. Kotzer had a hit on him first, and then the Prairie Wolf defense comes in, and Brett Kotzer thumping his chest that time. He was able to read that play and got to Bartman first. And the second-ranked rushing defense in the conference, Nebraska Wesleyan, holding teams just 69.3 yards per game. And this time it was Kotzer on a blitz right up the middle. Slowed him down, and then Walton finishes it off. Third and 10 for Northwestern. In the gun, Blumendahl looking to throw, pass up in the air. It's caught by Walker, and he makes the catch at the 35-yard line. He is tackled by Seth Wardine. It's a first down for the Red Raiders. Well, I said they've made adjustments. They put Wardine over at a corner spot from a safety spot to match up with Walker, but he's the big play receiver this afternoon for Northwestern. Nice pitch and catch from Blumendahl over the middle, had a step. Walker, seven catches over 100 yards and a touchdown. Here we go, defense. First and 10, this is at the 35. And it is Bartman and Taylor Tukolsky comes over and stops him. Corey Kundal over there too for the Prairie Wolves. This will be second and seven. Pick up a three in that last play. Under nine and a half minutes to go in this game. And Westland's defense trying to pick something that momentum away from Northwestern. And, and really the Red Raiders have been exploited defensively on that previous drive. And now the offense having some difficulty here. Pitch on an option. They go Smith outside, cutting back in, goes ahead, and is tackled at the 45-yard line. It's a first down for Northwestern. Tough running by Smith that time. Blumendahl did a nice job of that option, hanging on as long as he could. Flipping that pitch out there. Played pretty well defensively, but Smith able to get to the edge and make something happen. Plenty of time left, 840 and counting. First and 10, option play near side. Bartman on a kind of a delayed pitch gets the ball, but Brett Kotzer and several other Prairie Wolves, including David Jennings and Taylor Kukulski, yeah, were able to meet there, up with them. Hitner over there as well. Let's go, Good Jim job. Man. Everyone accounted for that time. Quarterback, pitch man, played it inside out from the safety position. Hitner did, forced him back in. and Lost him three on the play. So this will be second and 12 back at the 43 of Northwestern. Davis Blumendahl dropping back, pass over the middle, caught around the 45. And Bainey makes the tackle on Walker who makes another catch. Great recognition that time by Blumendahl. Saw the one-on-one -on -one matchup over there. Just a simple little slant play. Take a look, Walker, he was going that way all the time. Saw the matchup. Completes the pass, Blumendahl. The Red Raiders. Yeah, let's go, D. On, D. You know, Blumendahl has those two interceptions, but other than those miscues, 13 of 21 through the D. air for 214 yards. Red Raiders. Now into Wesleyan territory. They're at the 40, timeout called. Northwestern will take the timeout. 7.24 to go. And the Red Raiders of Northwestern picking up some more steam here. They're still ahead, 27 to 24 on 21 Sports. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln.
Northwestern taking the timeout. With 7.24 to play in this game, they're up by three. They are regaining slowly that momentum that Westland has picked up here in this fourth quarter, both on offense and defense. Well, it looked like the Westland defense, that big play from Kotzer early in the drive, dropped him for a three-yard loss, and then the big play to Walker. He's kind of been a thorn in the side this afternoon, Tyler Walker. He's got nine catches, almost 130 yards. He's been the target for Blumendahl in this game today. He's done more damage than the two backs have. Play action here, Blumenthal looking downfield, and it is incomplete, out of bounds, good coverage from Cody Eiler, and Biker was the intended receiver for Northwestern. Great job by Eiler down the sideline, thought he might have a chance as an interception here. Play action, Blumenthal unloaded it. Gonna poke it free there. Hey, let's go, D! Good job by Cody Eiler, the senior back there. So he'll be a tough one to replace next year for these yes, he will. Prairie Wolves. He just does so much, not only defensively, but in the special teams department. Here's a running play from Smith. On second down, Smith is stopped. It's a little hesitation by Smith to make one tackler miss. Still only gets a yard, say so against the run, the Wesleyan defense has been pretty salty. It's the big pass plays that have really come back to bite them. It's those plays for 15, 18 yards at a pop. Big third down here. Okay, now you gotta start thinking about that clock as well. You gotta get the ball back for your offense. Third and a long nine, Blumendahl rolling to his right. Has some room, goes a pass, and it is intercepted. It looked like no, they're going to wave it incomplete. Cody Eiler. Eiler had it all but in his hands. I think it came out as he hit the turf, but good play by Eiler. We'll see if this is four down territory if the punt comes out. But look at Blumenau rolling to his right, throws. He's chased down from behind, takes a hit. And here's a look at it. Eiler has it in Ooh. his hands, but can't control it. If he hangs on to that, I think they, that's an interception. He was had a foot in. Ben Green was that intended target for Blumendahl, and now Northwestern will have to punt. Here's the snap, rugby-style kick. Eiler lets it take a bounce, and it goes into the end zone as Northwestern tried to tip it back in before it got into the end zone but not in time, so it's an automatic touchback, and that will give the football for the Prairie Wolves at the 20-yard line. So, with 6.21 to go in the game, you got 80 yards ahead of you to do something. Defense did its job, got you the football back, a lot of time left in this one, but now just, and the need is a nice methodical drive, go down the field, punch one in, at least get in field goal range to tie it up, but it won't be easy against this Red Raider unit who's really been harassing Francis back there. He's done a good job of avoiding the pressure, but he's been able to avoid some near sacks, so he'll have to continue to work his wizardry. Play action. Rolling right side, under front, intended for level and complete, almost intercepted by Aaron Jensen. Jensen's had a couple of those where they were near interceptions. Second down here for Wesleyan. We see they get Francis on the move a little more that time, trying to take some of that pressure off of him. Give him a little more time to operate. Splits to the near side are Peeper and Davis. Keep an eye on Peeper. He's been quieter than that one catch. Second and ten here for Wesleyan. It's a toss, and it's Bryant. Takes around left side. Takes it to the 22-yard line. Gets a gain of two. Maybe more so to the 23. We'll give him three yards of the pickup. Six minutes and counting. Fourth quarter of action. Third and seven for the Prairie Wolves. At their own 23-yard line. They've gone to the air. They've ran the ball 
a little bit. And now a new play coming in as Ryan Larson comes not, in. And not a lot of time to get the play off here, Jeff. Breaking the huddle here. Seven on the play clock as we speak. And you get a quick snap. Play clock down to three. And now a timeout called by Nebraska Wesleyan. So we stop the clock at 5.34 remaining here in this game. Prairie Wolves call a timeout. Down three, 27 to 24 on 21 Sports. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. Abel Stadium is where we're at today for GPAC football and 21 sports. Nebraska Wesleyan calling a timeout. They trail 27 to 24 to Northwestern. 534 to play in this game. Big third down here, Jeff. Third and seven for Nebraska Wesleyan. They're eight of 17 on third downs this afternoon. None more important than this one right here, trying to keep the drive alive, trying to march down the field, get the tying, possibly go-ahead score. Francis dropping back, and he is set, and stopped for a loss, and it was Ethan Lynch who comes in and puts a stop on Francis, and Dustin Bryant is hobbling off the field too. And it's fourth down, the Prairie Wolves will punt. He brought a blitz that time. Bryant tried to pick it up, but he did his best, but he just got steamrolled. And Vandenberg with a punt, a booming kick. Takes a bounce inside the 40, bounces out at the 34-yard line. So Northwest will have it at their own 34. With just under five minutes to play in the game. Previous play on that third down, that play came in late, forced them to burn one of their timeouts. So they'll have two ref left the rest of the way. We'll see if that costs them in this final five minutes of play. And the one thing, too, Lucas, is that we're under five minutes. If Northwestern can move the ball down into Wesleyan territory, melt some more clock, then they got this thing wrapped up. One thing Rask Wesley does have going here, even if they give a field goal, at least they still would have an opportunity to go ahead with the touchdown. Option left side, Bartman gets the pitch. He is wrapped up by Reeves and tackled at the 38-yard line. Good stop there from Reeves coming in to make the stop. Reeves, one of those guys early in the season, kind of asserted himself in one of those starting roles at linebackers. Did a good job. Nebraska Wesleyan as the season rolls on. One of the top tacklers on the team. Second down, and we'll call it six. Blooming Dahl. Snap to him. Handoff given that time. Trying to get a number on that. I think that was Smith. And it was Brandon Smith who took the handoff. Good job up front, Walton and Latimer. One yard pickup up to the 40. Third down here for Northwestern. Corey Kundal in there as well. Those three did a nice job that time. Good pressure. Good penetration into the backfield. Slowed that running attack down. And again, a big third down here as the clock rolls. Under four minutes now. Third and four. Pass play from Blumendahl. It is incomplete. Intended target for Northwestern, J.C. Hoig, the tight end, the junior out of Atlantic, Iowa. Looked like he had it, pump fake here, zips it in there, going to the turf, rolled over it, tried to sell it, but left it loose. So Northwestern unable to keep going their, their drive, so it's a three and out, and they will punt. Eiler hanging around the 23-yard line. Rugby style kick again. Eiler picks it up at the 25. Still on his feet, and he is tackled at about the 29-yard line. So now, Wesleyan 
with, with another opportunity on offense. 71 yards. And you still got the two timeouts, so you have some time, but you do have a little more sense of urgency at this point. You got to, you know, beat those plays. You got to get in and out of there quick. You got to realize that you need to get these plays off before, you know, 10 inside 10 on these play clocks because you got to save some time down the stretch here. First and 10 for Francis and company at their own 29-yard line. Francis dropping back deep in the pocket. Lose a tackle, still on his feet, running to the far side, throws the ball. And Earhart, the intended target, did he make the catch? He did not. For a brief moment, moment Bryant was open on a seam route after he leaked out of the backfield down the center of the field, but the pressure came and Francis didn't have a chance to deliver it. Second and 10 from the 29. Curry Wolves, Sim Peeper to the far side. Delbaugh, Jones, and Davis out to the near side. Another receiver on the right. Francis looking to throw, he's in trouble. He is still on his feet, still moving around. He's scrambling in the pocket, upfield, pass caught by Delbaugh. And a first down at the 40-yard line. Wow, what a play. What a scramble. Francis doing the two-step back there in the pocket. How he comes out of there with any time. I mean, there's three or four times where it looks like he should be down. That's all with just a three-man rush. And Looked like a dosey do in the pocket, and Francis got out of there and found Delbaugh, who gets a first down. You give credit to Delbaugh, and also Earhart both stayed with it downfield. The receiver's coming back, giving him somewhere to go with it after he worked his magic in the pocket. Here is Francis. Throws to the near side, complete to Bryant at the 45. Bryant is forced out of bounds, and they will spot him at the 48-yard line. Van Ginkle looks like over to some of his teammates, a little confusion. A pickup of eight on the play, second and two coming up for the Prairie Wolves. 2.36 to go in this game. Wesleyan trailing by three, 27-24 to number 15, Northwestern. Peeper far side. One receiver split near side. Jones in motion. Francis, screen toss, complete to Bryant. Bryant at the 50, inside the 45, and tackled at about the 43-yard line, and a first down, tackled made by Jermaine on Ambrose for Northwestern. Great play call, a little screen pass. The pressure's been coming on Francis all afternoon, especially in the second half, so let it come. Drop it off to Bryant on the screen. First down yardage into Northwestern territory. Great way to combat that pressure. Let it come to you. Throw a screen at him. Clock winding down. Two minutes to go in this one. First and 10 from the 43 of Northwestern. Wide out split to the right, two to the left. Francis looking to throw. Target incomplete intended for Jordan Delbaugh. Delbaugh looked over a push that time. Coverage by Greg Hegstad of Northwestern. Good part about it, the incompletion stops the clock, minute 49, plenty of time to work here. You still have your two timeouts that you can use. Second and 10 here from the 43 yard line. A minute 49 to go as you said. Play clock down to 16 seconds. Keeper the wide out. In the slot toward the right is Earhart, doubles to the near side. Right in the backfield with Francis out of the gun. Francis looking to throw. Gets out of trouble, he stumbles ahead, and he throws the ball, and this could be intentional grounding, unless they're gonna say he was marked down behind the 50. They're gonna mark him down, I think. Yet, the officials are pointing at the 48 yard line, so it's a loss of yards. And then Nebraska Wesleyan has to take a timeout. Well, they do take a timeout. Prairie Wolves will take a timeout. Third down, coming up. A minute 41 to go in this one. 27-24, Northwestern ahead on 21 Sports. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So, make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. 
Make your life right in Lincoln. Well, the offense discussing a plan here on third and long. Tyler Francis was thrown back down for a loss of yards. The ball back at the Wesleyan 48. It is third and 19. Francis has worked some magic, avoiding some pressure all afternoon. That time he, he couldn't do it, though. It was too much. They ran a little stun up front. The defensive line, they still brought three, but we're able to get to him, and now four down territory here, so really you have two shots. You don't have to get this whole thing at one time. Francis out of the gun. Third down, looking to throw. Pass is complete to Delbaugh. Delbaugh is wrapped up. They'll give him four progress. No, they won't. And penalty flags come up, and it's another personal foul penalty. And believe it or not, it's Jermaine Ambrose who's whistled for it again. Is it Ambrose, or was it, was it Delbaugh? I think it's on flags Red come out. If it was unsportsmanlike again, almost a taunting. We'll listen into our referee here and find out. That's a huge call. Good job. Good job. If it is unsportsmanlike conduct against Ambrose, let's see what happens here. I'm trying to figure out where to spot this. It's going to be a dead ball foul. What? No. Three, one. You're not picking up. You're not picking up. You're not. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 31 on the defense. Ooh. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's huge. That is huge. Ninth penalty of the afternoon on Northwestern. And none bigger than that one. That, that keeps the drive alive. Now. Westland has a chance to build up on this. Take a look here. This is a short little completion. He's down. And then right there. It was right there. There it is. Choice words from Ambrose that drew the flag. And there was no hesitation. Ball at the 36-yard line. First and 10. A minute 15 to go in this one. Francis out of the gun. Dropping back. Looking to throw. Far side. Pass complete to Bryant. He gets a first down inside the 25 and thrown out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And the Prairie Wolf attack has this Northwestern defense on their heels right now. And Bryant out of the backfield, unaccounted for, wide open on the sideline, picks up good yards after the catch, finally bumped out of bounds by Zilstra. 103 left to play. First and 10. This is at the 22 of Northwestern. Doubles to the near side, one split far side. Bryant in the backfield with Francis, who's working out of the gun. Francis looks to throw. Bryant, diving, attempting, complete, could not make the catch. Coverage that time from Greg Hegstead. Clock stops with 59 seconds remaining. Secondary did a nice job that time. No options for Francis. Northwestern has won 12 in a row against Nebraska Westland. They've won five out of the six games they've played here in Lincoln in that time. Have been won by four points or less on a part of Northwestern. Second down and 10 from the Northwestern 22. Francis again, rolling to his left, looking to throw, cuts back in, throws the ball. It is incomplete. It was intended for Brooks Earhart. And it was Nate Van Ginkle who had coverage on the play for Northwestern. Van Ginkle might have took a hand to the helmet on that coverage. Looked like he was holding his hand. He's going to come off the field. Stops the clock, though. 52 third, seconds. Third down here. Still at the 22 of Northwestern. Well, you got to look now. You're at the 22, so you're looking at about a 30 or a 27-yard field goal attempt, right at a 30, right around there, which hasn't been automatic by any means. So any yards here are good yards, and now... Timeout taken by Nebraska Wesleyan. We'll step aside, too. 52 seconds to play. The Red Raiders of Northwestern up by three on 21 Sports. It's just surprising when I walk in how much it feels like home, even though we've only been here a month. Having a baby is a definite lifestyle change. Grayson's the boss around here. We moved in two days before he was born. 
Union Bank really helped us. They were so personable. They really got to know our story and care that we needed to get into the house before the baby was born. We're starting a family and developing our lives together in a place that we can call home. Third down and 10. The ball on the Northwestern 22 yard line and Nebraska Wesleyan with the football. With 52 seconds to go in this game, Northwestern ahead 27 to 24. That's kind of the summary where we're at here in this game. And Wesleyan got a big break on an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Northwestern. 75 yards in penalties against Northwestern. Nine penalties, two of those unsportsmanlike. Those are penalties you can avoid. Shoot yourself in the foot, keep the drive alive. See if they can capitalize. Francis on third down, dropping back. He's got time to throw over the middle, and it's complete. Oh, it was incomplete. It was right to Jordan Delbaugh. In and out of his hands. And now this brings up fourth down, and now you got to make the decision. You bring out the field goal unit, you go for it, it looks like they're going to go with the field goal unit to try to knock this you know, thing up. You get a little bit of hand on it there, but Delbaugh had a chance. The ball. They'll spot it at the 29. It is a 39-yard attempt. It's four for eight from this distance, 30 to 39 on the season. Lorraine with the kick. It's a driving kick that it gets, oh, gets it dead. A 39-yard field goal from Lorraine is good, and we are tied up at 27 with 43 seconds to go in regulation. Lorraine's missed some in Today, he's missed some throughout the season, but none have been bigger than that one right there. A low knuckler, but he got it through. Better than that than coming up with nothing that time. Exactly. And Lorraine, and Lorraine with a big 39-yard field goal. Timeout, back with Dayball Stadium in just a moment. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches, you know, $1, $2, $3, you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit LES.com today. See you next time. Able Stadium is where you're, what you're looking at now. We are deadlocked at 27 between the Prairie Wolves and the 15th ranked Red Raiders. 43 seconds left in regulation. That was the longest field goal that Lorraine has made on the season, a 39-yarder. Capped off a 12-play, 49-yard drive, took two minutes and 45 seconds. The big key though now, this final 43, Nebraska Wesleyan's defense has done a good job. You gotta keep them in check here. Driving kick, great kick. Smith in the end zone and he'll take a knee. And the ball will be at the 20 yard line of Northwestern, 25 rather, at uh, the Northwestern 25. So, the Red Raiders with 42 seconds to pull out a victory if they can do it in that amount of time. And this is a huge test for the Prairie Wolf defense. You know, Nebraska Wesleyan is trying to go avoid four consecutive losses for the, since 2001. So this is a, a big game for them from that standpoint, just trying to break the streak. Blumendahl with the option to the far side, gives the pitch to Smith along the far side. Ball knocked out of there, but too late. And Brandon Reeves, yeah, flag comes a in. Late might be a late hit this here is going too. to be a, likely a late hit against Reeves. And if if that's on Wesley, which it probably is, that's only their second penalty of the day, but at a very costly spot here. It's almost what it has to be. Personal foul. Number 54 on the defense, late hit out of bounds, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And this helps out Northwestern tremendously and it moves the football all the way to the 47 yard line at midfield with 36 seconds to go. And Blumendahl, I think at this point, Northwestern wants to get a ball to a point where they can maybe set up for a field goal and go for the win. 
Longest on the season for Mike O'Brien, their field goal kicker, 46 yarder. They get down to the 30. You know. So let's see what. Gotta be right around that 30 yard line where they need to get to be at the max of O'Brien's range. He's only only had two field goal attempts, or three field goal attempts on the season. Doubles to the near side. Play action here, Blumendahl over the middle. It's complete, and he found the target that time. It is Tyler Walker. Walker with the catch at the west side 35. A first down here with 30 seconds to go. And they quickly go to the line. And they spike the ball and stop the clock. 27 seconds remain. Two timeouts, though, left for the Red Raiders. None for Wesleyan. We'll play action over the middle. Their favorite target on the day, Walker. Walker's having a career day. And he has been the prime target today for Blumenthal. Second and 10 from the Wesleyan 35. Blumenthal looking to throw. Has some time. Short toss is complete. And the reception made by Hoig. Coverage that time coming from Spencer Fecht of Wesleyan. 19 seconds remain. Are you going to rule that incomplete? Incomplete or did Northwestern take a timeout? But they need to get on the same page here and sort things out. There's a completed time, completed pass, timeout, Northwestern, second charge, timeout. So the Red Raiders take a timeout. 19 seconds to go. We're back after this on 21 Sports. Hi, I'm Fred Olds, president of Nebraska Wesleyan University. This year we mark an important milestone, Nebraska Wesleyan's 125th anniversary. Join us on campus this fall for our anniversary kickoff celebration and homecoming activities. In addition, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends will collectively take on a challenge to give 12,500 hours of volunteer time to community service. Check our website for event schedules, stories, and photos of today and yesteryear. All of us who share a sense of pride and ownership in Nebraska Wesleyan University have a wonderful opportunity this year to reconnect with friends, students, professors, and staff, and to celebrate all that we have accomplished together. I look forward to seeing you soon. All right, third down, here we go. Blumenthal, out of the gun. Dropping back, shifting over to Kotzer and Tarkovsky come in. Kotzer came on a blitz on that left side. Now time is winding down. They stop the clock with four seconds remaining. Northwestern. North, Northwestern takes their final timeout. Fourth down coming up here. Brett Kotzer on the blitz, and what a time for a big sack on Blumendahl. What a finish in this one. Nebraska Wesleyan has stayed the course in this one. And, you know, they could have easily folded after the first offensive play from scrimmage. A fumble and three plays later, they're down 6 nothing. And they stick with it, battle all the way back. Tie it up here, chance to force overtime. I'm trying to think back here really quick as we look for our notes. The last time that Nebraska Wesleyan played overtime, the last overtime contest. In the meantime, we'll search for that here in a moment. But this is fourth down. Fourth down here. And Blumenthal out of the gun. Deep coverage from Wesleyan as they look to air it out. On fourth down. Time to run. Latimer on his tail. And takes it down the turf. It's time to expire. And we got ourselves a doozy here at Abel Stadium. Time has expired in regulation. We're in overtime as Nebraska Wesleyan 
And Northwestern ranked 15th in the country are deadlocked at 27 apiece. There you see it again, Latimer coming after Blumendahl to make the stop. Tied at 27, we head to overtime after this on 21 Sports. Hi, I'm Fred Olds, president of Nebraska Wesleyan University. This year we mark an important milestone, Nebraska Wesleyan's 125th anniversary. Join us on campus this fall for our anniversary kickoff celebration and homecoming activities. In addition, our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends will collectively take on a challenge to give 12,500 hours of volunteer time to community service. Check our website for event schedules, stories, and photos of today and yesteryear. All of us who share a sense of pride and ownership in Nebraska Wesleyan University have a wonderful opportunity this year to reconnect with friends, students, professors, and staff, and to celebrate all that we have accomplished together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches, you know, $1, $2, $3, you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit LES.com today. See you next time. It's just surprising when I walk in how much it feels like home even though we've only been here a month. Having a baby is a definite lifestyle change. Grayson's the boss around here. We moved in two days before he was born. Union Bank really helped us. They were so personable. They really got to know our story and care that we needed to get into the house before the baby was born. We're starting a family and developing our lives together in a place that we can call home. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a garbology lesson straight from the front page. There's a right way to recycle newsprint. Never put newspapers in the mixed paper bin at recycling drop-off sites. You don't have to be a genius like me to know that sorting takes extra time and money. So remember these doctor's orders and put newspapers and mixed papers in separate recycling bins. For more tips, visit recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. We're back at Abel Stadium and we are in overtime. We were trying to do some searching the last time that Nebraska Wesleyan played in overtime and, and according to Sports Information Director Alex Linden, in his time since he's been SID, Wesleyan has not played in an overtime game so it's been at least since, well, 08. He since said, 2008. For sure they haven't played an overtime game at home since 2008. Yeah. That much he could tell me. So The it, rest he has to dig. So. It, it's been a while and I think he's probably still looking through his his files to see the last time that Wesleyan played in overtime. We are at 27 all. And what will happen here is that they're deciding here on a point flip to see who's going to go first on offense. They'll have the ball. I believe they'll spot it at the 25 yard line. And what will happen is that if the first team scores, the other team will get a chance. You get to answer. And after uh, after three consecutive games against ranked opponents in you know, Nebraska Wesleyan, it struggled against ranked opponents. Sounds like we, we got them. 05 against Northwestern the was the last overtime game. <laughs> we didn't find out how that one went, but 05 against Northwestern the last overtime game. But talk about ranked opponents, third consecutive week, and since 2005, won the top and picked to go on defense first. Nebraska Wesleyan will have the ball on the 25. So that's what you, you know. You win the toss. You want to take the. Some of our crew hard at work overtime for them this afternoon as well. As yeah. They take defense first, so they know what they have to get done on the offensive side of the ball. But Nebraska Wesleyan looked for just their fifth win against the ranked team since 2004. They're four and 20 over that span. So looking for win number five. So all kinds of streaks going on here. Trying to 
not lose four straight for the first time since 2001. And you got to feel at this point like the momentum is kind of on the side of the Prairie Wolves. So Nebraska Wesleyan will have the football first year in overtime. And they'll have it at the Northwestern, what has been the Northwestern 25 yard line. And so. Say, we won't go end to end here. The no. Wolf just flip it around, play it on the same side. Yep, that's how they will determine what, who will win this. So getting the chain set over there. It's been a while, no chain gang hasn't seen one of these, so. It, what a rally. I'd say this is a great comeback this afternoon so far to force the overtime by the Prairie Wolves and at the guy to Francis. Francis ball tip up here incomplete. Second down coming up here for the Prairie Wolves. Davis split near side, keeper to the far side. Francis now under center. Hand off, they go Bryant. Bryant is tackled. Aaron Jensen there to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. About a two yard loss back at the 27 yard line. Big third down here for Wesleyan. Just good penetration by that front three again from Nebraska, or Northwestern. Jansen that time. It's been a long line of Jansen's at Northwestern playing linebacker. They're all have been pretty salty. Keeper split, far side, Earhart, Delbaugh, and Larson are split to the near side, and timeout called by Wesleyan. Time out in the field, back to Able Stadium in just a moment. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches, you know, $1, $2, $3, dollars. you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit les.com today. See you next time. All right, third down and 11 for Wesleyan. The ball at the 26 yard line. Francis out of the gun. Bryant with him in the backfield. Francis looking. Has some time, he's in trouble, gets out of danger, still on his feet, and he's going to take it for a walk. See, and right there, Francis does a good job of avoiding the initial pressure, but he's got to get rid of that, because now you're out of field goal range. So the ball spotted at the 35-yard line. See, he does a good job here, he steps up, sees he has nowhere to go. Right here, he needs to get rid of the football, and at least give Lorraine a chance to kick one through the uprights. He just hit the 39-yarder. It would have been a pretty lengthy attempt for Lorraine at his range, but at least he had a chance. Now you have to pick up 20 yards. Fourth down. Francis looking to throw and loses the football. So the Prairie Wolves Cannot convert on that set of downs. And now, Northwestern with the football. So now the defense got to come back out and get after. That's the thing. You can't feel like you you know, you're, you know, lost the game because you didn't. You still have an opportunity to keep them out of the end zone. And now the Wesleyan defense has got to up their game. Russell Walton, Reeves out there. On the crowd to get after it, make some noise. Blumendahl and company. And along in the year, a 46 yarder by Mike O'Brien. Blumendahl, play action, short toss, incomplete, intended for Smith. Russell Walton, like a Mack truck, was coming in right after Blumendahl. 
this point, you got to think, probably, as you take a look again, here comes Walton. They ran the screenplay, so there was no one there to back knee to get a little chip on Walton before he got out of the flat. Didn't do it. He came unabated. And put him on his backside, but you got to think, probably fairly conservative play calls here as you just try and improve your field goal position because that's all you need. Blumendahl on second down, screen pass complete to Smith. 20, inside the 15, inside the 10, and tackled at the eight yard line. And it's a first down and goal situation. Just good tough running after the catch that time by Bartman. Looked like he might have bobbled a little mid run, but he wrapped it up, hey, two hands. Now first and goal. Now a big play here. As Blumendahl goes from the gun, running the option, pitch near side, Smith, five, and thrown out of bounds by Reeves at the three yard line. At this point, Nebraska Wesleyan defense can step up and force a field goal here. Think about how many kicks they've blocked over the past two years. They've already blocked an extra point this afternoon. Second and goal. Ball at the three yard line. Northwestern on the front doorstep. Lindahl, the quarterback. Snap to him. Hand off Smith into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwestern. And Northwestern escapes with a win in overtime here in Lincoln. And their streak is now at 13 games. It's the second overtime game won by Northwestern in the past 13 meetings with Wesleyan. And they have now won six out of the last seven games here in the capital city. So Smith's touchdown wins it for Northwestern. They win today 33 to 27 over Nebraska Wesleyan in overtime. So for our entire 21 sports crew, for Bill Luxford, Bo Wolf, Lucas Foreman, I'm Jeff Boat, St. Salon. Thanks for watching and good afternoon from Abel Stadium here in Lincoln. This Great Plains Athletic Conference College football game was made possible by Lincoln Electric System. Use LES to save more. Union Bank. You belong here. And Nebraska Western University, where experience is the difference. Your experience.